When you're looking to lower your score, most people are telling you hit more greens in regulation. I'm going to play this round missing every single green for six holes to see what we score if we just plan correctly. It doesn't make much sense that a 10 handicap only hits two more greens, but there's 10 points between them and a 20 handicap. So where does the difference in score actually come from? Because it sure as hell is not a lot more greens in regulation. Step one of actually hitting more greens is to hit a shot to a distance you prefer into the hole because then you're comfortable and confident to hit a great shot. Now I'm in a position where I can luckily on a hole like this set up my favorite distance like this of about 120 yards. But if you can't, you have to accept that you just can't do it and then take your next best shot and miss the green in a place that's easy to chip and putt. People will think you'll never learn how to score like this. This is exactly how you learn to score. This is how you learn to score in amateur golf as we are scramblers by default. I've got 110 yards, so I'm gonna leave this one short left is the best position to be on this hole, if, even if you're further away. You can aim to finish short left and give yourself a simple as chip. You lower your score by making your misses smaller. Your intended shot is to go in the hole. If you miss it by 30 feet, you've made a mistake. If you miss it by 20 feet, you've made a smaller mistake. If you miss it by 10 feet, you've made an even smaller mistake and you're happy with that. So understand every shot is a mistake. Just reduce the mistakes into places that you can get up and down. I highly recommend if you're screwing around and you're bad with a driver, get yourself a ladies driver, second hand, something like that on eBay and give it a whack. You feel like you're hitting like a a baby seven iron down there. This is a really long hole. It's a long par four. You're just not going to hit these greens in regulation unless you have maximum distance. So all this hype about greens in regulation all the time, it gets to you, especially when you can't reach maybe five or six of the holes in a golf course. But holes like this can be tough. Here, after a drive, we still have 235 yards to the middle of the green. What I'm going to do is hit my 200 club and see if we can get up and down from 30 or 40 yards. So instead of getting hyped up about greens and regulation because that's how you get your lower scores, why don't we just get it to a place where we feel we can get up and down from with a comfy shot on our second. We left ourselves a 30 yard pitch. It's not an easy one because the pins cut right on the front. So what often happens with this is that you try to be greedy and you leave it short because you're trying to hold the chip instead of looking beyond the pin there you can look left and see how much space there is or you can look beyond the pin dead straight and land it at the hole and leave yourself a 15 footer or so to make the par you'll make some of them not many but it's better than leaving yourself a double chip so it's always wise to be less greedy and more more conservative by going a bit longer on this one and then by going longer you trick yourself into actually getting a perfect shot See, so I've left myself a longish putt, but I'm on the green. We're going to make a putt every now and then, but you're not going to make a second chip. Of course, I hit the ball a little bit further, so it's very easy for me to say this. So I've got 166 here. I'm going to normally hit a 9-iron, okay, or pitching wedge, and I'm going to lay it up short right to show you how easy the hole can be. It's easy for me to do that high loft. What about people, though, who night need to hit like a five wood the same distance. Well, this is a five wood, so I'm gonna slow my swing down a bit and hit that little fader that people hit and just set this one up on the right-hand side. We wanna avoid that big ass bunk on the left and we wanna hit a ball up to the right side there because that's the easiest place to chip from if we do miss the hole. And even going long here, 177, will probably be good easy chip. Just stay away from the bunker. So let's say we have a five wood and I'm gonna just bunt it down there give myself a shot from the right side. We've left ourselves on the correct side of the green, but would have been preferable to be up there pin high because it's flatter. We're coming from below the green. So we just have to accept that and make sure we take into account, land this two or three yards on. Oh, maybe a little bit too far left, but we give ourselves that putt for the par. Now, am I the best putter on YouTube? Probably. 
But you can also get good because I was a very, very bad putter. I highly recommend putting out of your mind <laughs> by Bob Rotella. No jokes. It's even on YouTube. Someone's ripped it and it's free if you don't want to pay for it. Just download it as an MP3 and just listen to it daily. Tell you what, it's going to transfer into the rest of your bag because what you do wrong in your full swing, you do in your putting stroke and vice versa. And on this hole, I'm going to set myself up probably about 130, 145 yards by hitting a six iron off this tee. But you know what? Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll hit a chip six iron, leave myself a longer approach to show you how to plan a hole like this too. We want to get it to 150, but if we can't, we're just going to have to deal with it. Now I'm going to have a very long approach into this green, which means I'm not going to be able to really hit the green because it's 75% surrounded by water. So I'm going to have to plan this perfectly to not give away shots. I've done it. I've let myself a long shot into the hole, 186 yards. That is a very, very intimidating shot over water like this. But it becomes much less intimidating when you realize you don't have to go shooting at the pin, which is basically giving away shots if you don't hit the ball right. Now you've got that anxiety and boop, boop, boop in the bunker or in the water. What I see there is Texas on the left hand side. Big, open, conservative and safe. What distance do I need to carry on the line left to be safe? 132. To be safe on the pin line, 160. So I have an extra 30 yards to play with on the left side, 130 minimum and I can go all the way to pin high at about 186. I have 50 yards of depth there in fairway, and I can probably go 50 yards left of the pin and still be safe without giving away shots. Let's see how close we can get to the left edge of the green with less carry at 130, 135, hitting our 175 yard club. So for me, it's very easy to just place an eight iron there, very easy, but I'm gonna hit the seven wood like some people might and aim it out left with a little fader and see if we can get it to finish in a nice chippable position. Okay, well I've hit that too great. I've left it a bit short here, actually got it really nicely on the line with that little fade to the hole. I could go much further left, but I've left myself this chip. I've got a pitching wedge here, I could probably even use an eight iron. Just bump it on the front. I'm going to try it with the pitching. Whoa, we leave that to two feet. Now I'm not I'm not that great good at chipping. I haven't been playing for a while. But if you get if you get out there, practice, and you start to understand how your ball rolls out with one club, you can pitch with your pitching wedge and just chip with that all the time. You're going to get so much better at this. This is where you learn to score. Because scoring is not about birdies, scoring is about reducing the big numbers, getting the waste out of your game. Par fives are really long holes, I know, and a lot can go wrong between here and the green, I know. But let's just get a ball in play. And from there, even if we hit a few shuris, which I'll show you, if you don't lose hope and you just keep advancing the ball forward, one good shot can save a hole just like those chips have saved me. And to be honest, I haven't played that much lately, but I'm getting back into the groove of it. And with a bit of practice, you can also start chipping better. Let's just get a ball in play. Just a little wood ski up there. Now that could be an average drive for a lot of people. And then I'm, from there, I'm going to show you what happens, even if you shuri the ball. With 280 yards to go, we can split this up into two shots. We can do all the best plans, but what if you hit a dufferoonie? I don't know how to simulate a shot of a duff. So I'm just going to hit the chipper down there and see how far I can go. Because to be honest, sometimes you're better off just splitting it up instead of, instead of hitting a top. So let's see how far we get down there with a the chipper. Punch seven wood, a chipper. I think you can do this stuff too. Really, I do. With 163 yards left, what are we going to do? Well, I'm taking out the chipper again just to show you I have no control. I don't know what's going to happen. What a shot! I have no idea what's going to happen, but let's see if we can just plan this to a good position to get up and down, short, right. There you go, little, little teeth chipper, <laughs> and I'm short right. This is golf. You can hit the crapper shots as long as they go somewhere in the direction you want them and not in the water, not in a hazard, still in play, closer to the hole. Well, I've got myself into a chippable position here where we can easily get up and down, even chip this in. 
I got my 56 degree because it's a short carry and then a short um, roll out to the hole. So I want to open this face up, get my weight on the left side and just get this lofted. Ooh. And hit the hole. Even a blind squirrel finds an acorn. Okay, here we go. We're going to putt this bad boy. What a touch. This video is sponsored by GX Gloves. This is my glove of choice for the year. Absolutely stunning. This one is about 15 rounds old and I haven't even tried using another one. I'm trying to keep all of them because they are just so stunning. GX Golf. Check them out in the link in the description or the QR code on the screen right now. So sometimes the putter is better, sometimes the wedge is better. You've got to know what's going to work in the moment, but that's how you get up and down easier by learning which one to use in each situation to score better. Now this is where being out of position makes a big problem for you. We're going to go over the bunker toward water from firm ground in the cow grass. So when you get out of position like this, now you have a problem. So I have to be very delicate here. And this is where like elite short game skills are really what we're talking about. For average pitches and chips, you don't need elite short game skills. You can hack it around. So avoid short siding yourself like this with trouble between you and the hole. Turf. This could be really good or really, really bad. That's, that's just the nature of this shot. It could be teeth, it could be fluff, or I could get lucky. Wow, good job. And I got seriously lucky because I skimmed off the surface there and I kind of teethed it. So, <laughs> using the bounce. When it comes to playing like this, you have to believe you deserve to make these putts. I'm due to miss one. I've been making all of them. Could I miss this one? I could. I'm due to miss one, but yeah, I'm going to try my best, but believe I deserve every one. Is that ridiculous? Of course it is, but golf is a ridiculous game. If you want to see how ridiculous it is, check this video out. It's going to help you to chip and putt way better to reduce the scores when you miss all the greens, just like I did.